Bob Trucker here. Welcome back to Trucking Story. This is episode four. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple things here. Let's uh, bring up our progress history. This is a great thing that lets you see, you know, how you're moving along. Uh, if you highlight these, you can see you can see what jobs you took. You know, it tells you what commodity you moved, the empty pallets, what you got paid, how much XP you got. So you can see we went from 242 XP to 488, doubled it. Um, not quite doubled it, but you know 736. So we're definitely making a nice, nice move through this uh, through the process. Um, heading up to enthusiast. Uh, you know, played for hour and four minutes, but you know, game time. Uh, you know, 13 hours of transport and we've gone 718 miles total in our deliveries so not terribly far but you know obviously just as a new trucker we're starting out and once again just as a reminder we've we've been adding to our long distance um, we're then going to start to open up the different cargoes uh, once we level up which hopefully will be this time so again Let's take a look at the job market and see what we've got and get going. All right, so 639 miles with the cable reel, or 635 miles with construction houses. So one of the key things here is we've got heavy cargo, and we've also got an articulated trailer, which adds to the challenge. So there's definitely some difficulty there. It looks like we'll be dealing with the Bullnose Kenworth here. Uh, 18 speed, which is good for hauling up through the mountains. So we'll go ahead and we'll take that. Now, what that normally means, um, you know, what, what they've got on the screen here is basically, a, you know, obviously a very large articulated trailer. Um, but you've got multiple pivot points, which they don't have you then back in, obviously, because you really can't easily do that. I think in reality you can. Again, not being a, a trucker myself, I don't know for certain, but I know in the game trying to back it up if I've gotten stuck in places, it's definitely a challenge to, to do that. So, let's... Uh, you know, get ourselves set before we pull off. Again, turn off the in cab. Uh, get the lights turned on. Let's take a look at what we've got. So, you know, you can see we've got definitely a couple interesting pivot points here. Obviously, the giant cable um, flags on the back. So, definitely quite a lengthy setup here. So, we've got to be quite careful on what we're doing. Now the one thing I can do, I did check the brakes since last time. I I think I'm set. We'll certainly find out as we go. And uh, But yeah, this one has the driver's side mirror a little bit closer where I can again turn off that pop-up. But we'll head out here gonna have us go right or left she's not really saying or I didn't hear as I was chatting so let me zoom in on the map here looks like we want to go to the right and then head up just wondering now oh, yeah because we're heading up that road I'm almost thinking it's easier to leave here going out left, but let's just take a look and see what we've got. Turn right. All right, so again, because of the length, I'm going to go out really almost as far as I can because otherwise we're going to we're going to clip things pretty badly. Right. 
challenge with driving in the night like this is obviously the visibility is terrible. We don't have enough lights on the trailer in the back to really be able to tell if we're clear. So definitely not the optimal driving environment, but this is the job we've got, the job we've been assigned to take. So, again, because of the heavy cargo, we're going to have, um, you know, different braking and, and different acceler acceleration, certainly. Wow, this is a nice, oh boy, I think I, hmm, I may be up right against that wall. Oh, cleared it. Wow. Yeah, I'm still not sure that this was the best way to go, but this is the way she is telling us to go. And it's possible the left turn in the city would have been had less clearance and we might have had a harder time. So I have found that, that following where the, the guidance in the game suggests tends to be a little better. Um, you run into less problems, but not always. You know, I hop. Might have a few people there at midnight. Who knows? It's always good to have breakfast. All right. So civilization finally out of the extreme dark. Oh, perfect. So with the heavy heavy load it's great if you can get the lights on in sequence and don't have to stop and lose your momentum although as I say that now we're likely to have the problem here because obviously getting going again with that extremely heavy load takes a bit so the hope is that we can shortly get onto some roads that won't have lights that we can then move along on because we're likely looking at you know, 45 minutes, maybe even up to an hour of driving time just because of the heavier load. Um, that gas station, I just realized, a little too small, but we're certainly going to need to fill up. Um, so I'm going to want to do that somewhere that I can easily get in. But we'll see what what options we have as we drive along here. All right. Well, we're out of the out of town at least. So now we get to put the pedal to the metal and get out and move along. So the big challenge, obviously, with the heavier loads is heavier, longer load, is it's certainly easier to clip things, uh, and as we're heading north up into the mountains and so forth, uh, and the roads get tighter turns, it's going to be a little bit more challenging, and that's where uh, it's easy to clip other, other vehicles. So, just as it got dark, I mean, you can still obviously see the landscape, even though it's midnight, um, you can see there's a little, enough light that the game puts in that you're not entirely blind and it's not pitch black even though in reality probably out here and um, I believe we're coming out of New Mexico I don't remember if Gallup's in New Mexico or in Arizona but you know out here at this time of night in reality it probably would be pitch black but the good news is um, by about 4 a.m. Um, we're going to start seeing daylight again, and it'll become a little easier. So we've got about four hours of driving, three and a half at this point, where it's going to be a little bit of a challenge, uh, but it'll get a lot better shortly. Um, so because this is a short enough run, still under 650 miles, uh, I'm just going to, you know, I've decided I'll just take it as opposed to normally I might have said, eh, we're picking up this load at 11.30, let's go ahead and pull into a rest stop and 
drive this thing in the day. So hopefully I won't regret it. Hopefully um, my brakes truly are fixed. Otherwise, uh, with this kind of a heavy load and unarticulated trailer, we might be experiencing towing services, which I certainly would prefer to avoid, but I must be honest, I've certainly had to employ at times um, when I've pushed it a little bit. Wow, look at that, an old old VW bug. So, yeah, some of the fun of the open road, you just don't know what kind of vehicles you're going to see as you drive around and you know gives you gives you something to enjoy not sure who's heading out on a tour bus here out into the desert I don't know that there's any large towns on this route but I suppose folks head everywhere got some lights up there. Oh, I think this is a gas station, if I recall. I just wonder if it's large enough for me to pull in with... Oh, no, it may not be. This may just be a town. Yeah, we don't have a gas station icon on the screen. So yeah, it's just a little town to slow us down a bit. And of course, one stoplight town got to have some of those otherwise what fun would it be being out west oh, we are just getting so lucky with the lights I promise you this is not normal normally you know kind of like anywhere you go in real life you're trying to get somewhere and you get stopped at every street light that tends to be what happens here in the game oh, those just turn green my guess is we're not going to get lucky on this one. No, well, plus we're turning left, and the left turn signal is red, so we will have to stop. Good news is brakes appear to have been fixed. Either that or maybe the other truck had faulty brakes. Maybe I'll go with that. Wasn't my bad driving. I just got a bad truck. Not really happened doesn't really happen in the game, but it's a sim, and we're pretending, so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right, I've got to swing this one pretty wide now. This AI, this truck pulling forward is concerning me, because sometimes they'll just move um, when you swing wide like that, and I don't know if it's because they suddenly think, yeah, he's not going to turn, he's going to go straight. Um, luckily, he didn't. So, we'll continue on here. This is taking me down some really small roads, which is going to make this trip a lot less enjoyable than it would have been on the interstate to just get it done, but suppose this is the best route to get there otherwise I might be adding hundreds of miles to my trip so other problem is we haven't really had any options for gas and we are getting close to where it's going to start telling us we're going to be running empty let's see this may be I'm just not seeing any icons for gas here at all my hope is, though, that is gas and that it is also an interstate. It is gas. Is it large enough for us to get in with this giant trailer? So, you may, we may get an opportunity to kind of do what, no, this one actually looks like it might work quite well. It might be a full pull through which would be a blessing absolutely I have to get gas miss GPS what do you Please make a when possible. 
I will, after I get gas. Alright. The question is, are we going to be able to pull out enough? So we've got to shut the engine off. Again, the nice thing in the game is gas fills up pretty quickly. So as you can see, we're already almost at 50 gallons. Um, it would really be terrible if they made you sit here for the full 150 gallons and how long it would really take in an actual big rig um, with real gas pumps, but luckily they didn't do that, so... I cannot see the back of that thing for the life of me. Wow. Alright, what have we got here? Alright, so I think we're okay. The only problem is, yeah, we'll have to get back to the one of the entrances, which is up here. But... We now will have enough gas to finish this haul without having to pull in again. And we should be fine on rest time as well. Now, there's someone behind me there. I kind of neglected to check because I felt we were in good shape. Ooh, wow. I did not see him. That was almost bad. Well, if there's one thing I'm doing in this series, it is probably not making you very comfortable that I actually know how to drive anything. Yeah, four episodes in, and I've taken 15 minutes to park, didn't know how to use my brakes, and now nearly got broadsided by a bus. Ooh, I'm certainly using up all of my luck, that is for sure. Man, man. All right, well, the good news is, is we're crawling up this hill. We do get to bypass the way station, so that's good news, although we're still going to have to stop, but, but not bad. We at least weren't fully stopped, so that's a pressure tank load on the other side that just passed us by had to haul those before. Not nearly as heavy as these cable rails, but... Yeah, this way station is one of the crazier ones, because it's at this weird three-way intersection. And, um, like, if you're coming from the north there, and then coming south here, um, you've got to come down if, if it tags you up earlier on the road, even though you might have been, you know, your GPS is telling you to turn left. So, it definitely gets a little frustrating sometimes. But there was one time, yeah, I got penalized for not stopping at the way station because the GPS was telling me to turn, and I'm like, oh, maybe there's a way station that way, and then it flagged me for a penalty for ignoring the way station stop. So... If you are driving this stretch of road, you do want to make sure, pull it up on the map real quick, just so you kind of can see. So yeah, just north of the, the border uh, into Colorado here is where this strange thing is located. All right, so good news is we are in Colorado. We're just gonna skirt the corner there as you saw on the map. Swing wide. We don't have anybody in the right lane, so I think we're okay to go a little wider just to make sure we don't clip the trailer on the back. And then, uh, there we go. Up to 65 again, so we can move along here. Hopefully we won't have any cattle crossing the road, which, again, in-game doesn't happen, but, you know, something is... You're driving out west here, certainly. Well, you'd hope it wouldn't happen naturally, because obviously then they've gotten out of their fenced-in locations. But probably a reality at 3 in the morning in the middle of Colorado sometimes. Yeah. 
After all, they don't have cow catchers on trains for nothing. So. Yeah, it's just painfully slow how long it takes a heavy load to get moving. So. You know, but at this point, at this point, we are getting up to that point where, um, you know, the loads will take a little while. As I said, I think for um, the next three or four levels, we probably will not extend the distance any further. But um, keep in mind, even though this is 650 miles, um, the skill point we apply doesn't take effect until the time after, so we are actually able to take up to a thousand miles now, I believe, is what we've unlocked. Um, so we still may have some lengthy hauls after this, so really the episodes will get longer because the uh, trips are going to get longer. We are still not up to full speed, although that downhill did help a little bit. We're getting close here, but we've been accelerating for a minute and a half <laughs> and still haven't maxed out at the 70 miles an hour I'm trying to get to. There we go. Of course, just as we hit a hill and slow down again and hit a speed zone and have to slow down again can't win as a trucker. Down to 30. Wow. Wow, oh, we're hitting that T-junction, so... Well, I can't go straight on very far, so... Which way do I need to go? I assume left, given Keep the general... And then turn right. Oh. Huh? I guess it's good that she knows where we're going, because clearly I don't. Up to Moab, so heading up to Utah. Oh, stay, stay green. Wonderful. I cannot believe how absolutely amazingly lucky we are getting with the lights. God, that's going to be a tight one. Wow. Cleared that light pole. Last thing we want to do is take out a traffic light. Not seen them give a fine in that for the game. But, or a fine, a fine for that in the game. Sorry about that. But I could only imagine in real life what that has to be like, especially if you're hauling in someone else's truck and you take out a major piece of infrastructure in some city. The paperwork for that it's got to be insane. Alright. Looks like the road's straightening up a little bit, because this is where it gets a little bit dangerous. If you obviously want to make good time, but you want to get there. And, you know, in a big heavy truck like that, the last thing you want to do is run into somebody. Why are you slowing down? At the absolute worst place, you go down to 30 miles an hour. What are you doing? So there are times when I'm impatient sometimes, but again, this trailer is way too large where I kind of break the rules and go over the double yellow line and just get around them. And, cop coming the other way. I'm glad I didn't. That would have been an accident and a ticket. It would have been a very expensive decision, but got to try to be safe here too, so we'll slow down even though I have no idea why he was slowing down. I get it was a blind canyon turn, but got to assume that things are going well. So as you can see, we're getting up on 5 a.m., starting to get quite a bit more visible, which is nice. So, um, you know, as opposed to being in darkness for 
10, 12 hours like you might normally be. Okay, so we discovered a viewpoint. It's over here in the parking lot. You can see the icon floating on the right. Um, again, uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure stop at one of those or some of those in the future, uh, given how long this trailer is at this point. Um, just too hard to turn around and too hard to maneuver. Uh, but what those are are cutscenes that, that SCS has placed in the game to kind of give you, oh, this is where it's difficult with a long trailer because I've got sandwiched in between on both sides. I'm amazed, honestly, that I didn't run into somebody there. That's a, a tough one. Carl's Jr. I haven't eaten one of those places in a long, long time. Here it is in Moab. We've got ourselves a Carl's Jr. Again, we are blessed with the lights. I think this, in the hundreds of hours I've played, this has absolutely got to be the most I've hit the lights ever. I, I, I don't know that we've actually fully stopped at one yet. It's amazing. Ah, it looks like we are going to pass. So you can see the sign up on the right, the little red sign. So this is the first recruitment center that we're going to pass. You're going to see it discovered. There we go. We've discovered a recruitment agency. So uh, once we get to the point in the game, which again, with a bank loan, we could do now. But with this profile, I'm, I'm choosing to not do that. I'm going to run as a, as a contractor for quite a while. Uh, you're able to hire drivers, um, you know, as you expand your company. Wow, this is a tight bridge. Luckily, that guy backed off. Otherwise, yes, I think I would have had a, um, an accident ticket for him there. This is pretty impressive, the way the... I don't think I've been here right at this time, just kind of just before sunrise with the way the mesas are lighting up ahead of us. It's pretty, pretty nice. Look at the sun in the rear view mirror coming up. Just see the sky tinging up a little bit. Uh, I had to swing wide, otherwise I was going to take him out in the left, right lane there. This is an extremely long trailer. Wow. Be happy when this load is done, but unfortunately, for a lot of the long hauls that we'll be doing in probably five episodes or less, these extended articulated trailers are the norm. Because um, that's usually what needs to be hauled long distances. So. All right, so we will be climbing out here. Not sure if we're gonna get on the interstate here or not. Thinking we're gonna continue on, given that we're heading. And then turn left. No, we are getting on here, all right. Oh, okay, this is the one that ends at the rest area and gas station, so didn't have a choice to continue on. Swing wide again. Looks like we're good. So it's the trick is always getting those back wheels to not cross the paint and then you know you're in good shape. And the good news is hopefully we have interstate for a while now and that will move things along fairly quickly. Nobody's gonna be waiting to not let us get on, which is also nice. But now we have to get up to speed. Good news is the speed we can get up to is 85. I don't know that we're ever going to be able to get this load up to that speed, given the fact we're out here in Utah and then um, we'll be heading into, I believe, Idaho and so forth. So. So where are we dropping this off? Pocatello. So, you know, I don't know that I've had a load in Pocatello in all my profiles. So this is 
This is good because this one's a little off to the side as far as the way the interstates go. Um, so being able to get this one discovered will actually give me some options that I haven't experienced in other other profiles. So right. that'll be good. And then exit right. So this is something that you normally will not be doing in a real truck, but again, because of the way the game works, you are able to go a little faster than you normally would. And so, as you can see, we didn't, whoops, well, that, I guess I've learned my lesson. You can't always do things. So, this makes this video a lot more entertaining than I was certainly planning. So, we're going to pull up and we're going to get the tow service and it's going to take us to price. It's going to burn some time, which is okay. So, bad me. Um, <laughs> took that one a little too hard. So, um, But on a lot of the en exits and entrances, you can basically take them at speed. Um, obviously, I misjudged that one. Shame on me. So, um, you know, we're going to cost our employer $3,000. And the good news is price is a little further up the road than we were at. Um, so we actually make some progress. Obviously, it's also daylight. So let's just take a quick look at the map, see where we're at. So yeah, this is where we rolled. They towed us up here. So we actually cut a little bit of our distance off. We've got 282 miles left to go. Um, let me just make sure I'm headed in the right direction. Okay. And yes, unlike in real life, the cable and everything is still in the back. So, but the damage we have done, wow, 43% to the trailer. Only 2% to the load, but I guess that makes sense given that it's a giant roll of... Whoop, turn left? Really? No. I'm going to go right, because I can get on the interstate there, so, and it's a lot easier than turning left, so, I'm like, really? Go straight on. Okay, sorry, sir. Whoops. He pulled out more than he should have. Wow, this is just a disaster of a delivery, but, Turn hey. Right. anyone who finally watches this you'll at least get to see some things you might not normally see in this game by others that play it like how to roll a truck get ready to turn right. Turn right. and uh oh good because i'm in the middle of the road now i get a wrong way violation this is incredibly wonderful what I am experiencing today, but let's see what we get. All right, let's get our map back up in the route advisor so we know where we're headed. Whoops, I'm not paying attention. That could have turned ugly quickly, but luckily it didn't. All right, the good news is I still, I think this is a better route turning right here because, um, oh, you know what? We might have a rest problem. Yeah. So we need a rest in three hours. And. Because, yeah, we burned three and a half hours because of that rollover, which it goes into our service time. And even though we're not driving, um, it counts against our duty time. So. Best laid plans. But we'll go from there. It is what it is. So. Alright, so 
when you're near price, don't take that turn at speed. <laughs> I have done it before, but uh, clearly with a lighter load. Um, I think the issue was the fact that I had the, uh, the heavy load in the articulated trailer and those physics probably did not work in my favor. So let me raise up the view a little bit here so that I'm not really like looking at my feet as I drive. And that will help. All right, so the left lane ends. We're gonna go down to a two lane road here. And I think there are a couple crazy turns coming up that I may have to slow down for as well. And this one's 50, so I th we're still okay. But if it gets down to like 45 or other things, Yeah, the other challenge, I didn't look. Yeah, we're only 5% damaged on our tractor. So the key there is once you get above 10%, 10, 12%, um, sometimes your truck will stop working. And you can restart it and go. I've never had the situation where um, I'm just totally broken down and I, I don't have a working truck. But obviously the more damage you do, um, the more likely you're going to have a problem. So um, those are things to keep in mind too. And I just wasn't sure with the, uh, the red indicator up there caught my eye, but I think that's the retarder on the truck that we're running into there and not... Um, a problem that we were having with the engine, which is what I was worried about that got me to look at that. Ah, the windmills. The things that they're telling us now in, you know, Texas are frozen and causing power outages, but out here, no problem today. Oh, there's a train down off to the left. Don't know if you caught it. Whoops. And uh, I do have to rest, I'm just not sure. I've got a rest area here. I'm still not within my two hour limit. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. So that yawn now tells me I'm tired. And yeah, I think I will pull in here because it looks like I've got some maneuverability. Uh, just missed that. We lost all our luck after rolling that truck. Now, the lights aren't going in our favor. In general, we are struggling. So, 38 minutes. Definitely the longest video, but again, to be expected at this point. We'll see if we can get this done in under an hour, but I think we're going to be hard pressed here. So it's going to be a little bit longer than I planned, but obviously I've had a few more challenges than I thought because I didn't think I'd be taking a heavy articulated load this early. Um, but that does obviously tend to take a little longer given that you... Um, so we're going to head in this way and then hopefully it will give us there we go, because I just want to rest so I can leave. The bad news is, let me take a quick peek, because I don't know that I want to drive at night. I don't have a choice. All right, I have made this really difficult for myself, but anyway. So we have to deliver this in nine hours, which I think is possible. But, um, that means we're going to have to drive through the night. Keep left and then turn left. So let's see. Yeah, three, we have four hours left. But yeah, since the rest is ten hours long, I cannot um, sleep again and, and drive during the day. Um, 
the game also only lets you do two rest stops in a row, basically. So if I wanted to, say, rotate it back onto the daylight, you can do that. But then um, if you try to do it a, a third time, you then aren't able to um, to do that because then it says you're not tired. So I have had that happen once where just the way I had timing, I was trying to get back to the daytime. And, you know, as we talked about, obviously the time shift is, you know, 10 hours. So you go back two hours. So I think I was doing something where, like, I had to rest at 3 a.m. and then it was 1 a.m. or something. I don't know. Clearly not thinking too clearly. Um, but no, it was 3 a.m. and then it was like 1 p.m. and something like that. I, I would have driven if it was 1 p.m., but you get the idea. There was something that basically I, I rested and then it was nighttime again and then I rested and it was basically going to be going to be nighttime again and then I was like, no, I want to rest one more time and then it wouldn't let me. So that does happen um so but that's what i was looking for since we had just gotten to daylight i'd rather not finish this up in the evening but we are going to do that so given that we have four hours or so we're going to be getting there at 2 a.m good news with the articulated trailer um, they're not going to be asking us to do any crazy maneuvers so regardless of whether the lights are off at the drop-off point or not, um, given how late we'll be arriving, I should be able to park successfully. Alright, discovered Provo. So this stretch of Utah is pretty nice. Now this one again, you can we I know we can take. It's just the wall is tight, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be careful because yeah, if you hit those markers, it gives you a hard time. Um, you know, you take damage, and at this point, given how badly I've done on this run, I'm just gonna be ultra careful because the last thing I want is then to have a a bad tractor that keeps shutting off on me every five minutes because then we'll never get done. And this will become the longest, dullest video in trucking story that you'll ever see. I was trying to think of something clever to say. It just wasn't coming to me. Just really obviously flustered myself with that truck flip because honestly embarrassed to have done that early on. So this part of Utah is nice um, because from a discovery standpoint, there's you get some options. Now I think staying on the interstate, it won't discover Salt Lake City that we're going to go through next, which is unfortunate, but we will get Ogden, which is right after it. Um, again, if I didn't have an articulated trailer that I'd have to wrestle with, and I wasn't running short on time because I was an idiot and flipped my truck. Um, I might pull off and uh, try to discover Salt Lake City. But for now, we're just going to go and get this cable reel to our customer. Lick our wounds and uh, take our next load next time. All right, so, sorry, I'm trying to think of something else to talk about. As these things get longer and longer, I'm not quite sure how exactly they're going to go, which may be something that people won't like. Um, definitely for those who are watching the series and are interested, you know, and subscribe, and, and want to keep staying involved certainly you know give me comments and let me know what you'd suggest um, always happy to to adjust for what the audience is looking for so exits to Cheyenne which currently do go some places in Utah but um, beyond that 
until they add the Wyoming map really won't uh, won't be available and won't be very useful. must have, yes. I had the cruise down at 60. I was trying to figure out. I'm like, wow, it is taking a long time to get up to speed, but that was because I wasn't paying attention to my settings. Alright, so, yes, we're through Salt Lake. We obviously did not discover Salt Lake. We just uh, had Ogden click through, I believe. So... We're getting close. Again, about two and a half hours of game time. Given quick math in my head about when we should be there, so hopefully, again, we might hit our goal of, of getting this video done in under an hour. That does assume that I don't do anything else stupid to waste more of our time, so. Let's just all hope for that. Now, ah, there we go. I thought I didn't see Ogden coming up, but as I was talking, I'm like, maybe I was so focused on resetting my cruise control and other things that that I had missed it. But, all right, we're going to move over and pass this guy here. Another older vehicle of some sort. I can't quite identify that, but that is definitely not a current make and model. Looks like something from the 70s, if not the 80s. This guy that's exiting, too, also appears to be a classic car. A lot of classic cars out west tonight. So this is the area um, I think I had mentioned. Oh, now we have to pull over for the way station. Oh, and this happens sometimes, too. So you see that car just stopped. Luckily, I kind of noticed it, and you just go around them, but um, again, it creates ridiculous traffic issues that you shouldn't have to deal with. And so I also get a damaged vehicle usage violation, because once you get to a certain point, um, they obviously don't want you driving an unsafe vehicle on the highway, so that is how the game gives you that simulation reality. So. Not only am I embarrassed, it cost me $220 because I rolled my truck. So, I guess that's why they give us penalties in the real world, to keep us from being fools. So, um, in a game, there's still consequences when you're doing a simulation. So, yeah, the one thing, I know, I think I had mentioned in the first uh, first video that as things got longer, normally when I play on my own, I, I use the ability that the game has to stream radio stations there, but um, yeah, I did discover YouTube, obviously, if I'm posting this video and, and putting it out publicly, uh, that's a copyright violation for music licensing, so I cannot... Uh, use that in the videos otherwise you won't be seeing the videos because they'll be pulled down um, you know and obviously we don't want that Keep I think right. yeah there we go we're gonna, right. we're gonna turn off here so yes so that turn has right. got me trying to figure out what I will do to fill the time when we're sitting here doing 1700 mile drives and I honestly probably, not only do you likely not want to listen to me, but I don't know that I want to sit here and talk for two hours while we're doing that. So that was another wonderful AI example of pulling in and basically crawling to a stop for no reason. But So 
at times I will just blow around the AI when they do that and just kind of dive over to the left and um, I just didn't notice it early enough this time. And again, I'm trying to be ultra careful to not cause any more damage. So we're obviously, we are getting close to Pocatello. So the pain will be over. On the off chance that we actually get up to speed, I'll update my cruise and get it get it up to 85 since the speed limit has increased, but I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that before we get there. Um, I don't think there's any more way stations. They're usually not that close. Just cross the Ohio or Ohio Idaho border. I don't know why I'm thinking Ohio, given that completely on the other end of the country from where that would be. I think I saw a state that ended in O and it just it sort of popped into my head. So I apologize for the incorrect commentary. So yeah, what, what may turn into is I, I may just start talking about random topics as we drive along, kind of like I'd imagine truckers are doing uh, when they're driving along for thousands of miles and getting on the CB and talking with each other about the news of the day or random things that are happening. Yeah, those beacons on those tankers will definitely wake you up at night obviously is their intent, but so. Whoop drifting over a little more than I would have liked. I was also honestly concerned that I might need to exit there. So it was a little a little tense. Because as I said, I, I, I know we're getting close, but um No, I didn't realize the speed limit has gone down again. And I'm going way too fast. Oh, and there is a way station, so it may flag us again. Let's hope not. I really don't want to get up to speed again. Eh. Oh, goodness. And the problem is, yeah, it comes up really, really fast, and you've got to cut over, and we've got that double trailer. Good news is he's obviously pulled away, so I can do that quickly, and there we go. Of course, getting pulled in again means we get fined again. <laughs> this is just overall a horrendous trip for the bank account. But I have no one to blame but me. Good news is they're seeing our turn signal, they're holding back. Um, sometimes you get some crazy behavior there, but I think this one had good visibility. And there we go, Pocatello's next right. So the good news is we are getting close. Now it's just become a, a game for me of are we going to get done in an hour? We should be hopefully off the road by then. There may just be some wrap-up comments, but we'll keep this as brief as we can, just to wrap things up. All right. I assume... I don't know where we'll go. I haven't really dropped off here, so I'm not sure where the... Okay. So 
heading to city center, as I saw. Given that it's this late, we're going to do a rolling stop. Because I want to conserve my inertia and move ahead as quickly as possible. Wow, I do not see anything on the map. Where are the drop-off points? Are they like completely on the other side of town? I do not understand. We haven't discovered Pocatello yet either. So we clearly have some place to go. Oh, this is one of these split city center. Ah, oh, there's we should be discovering shortly, which is good. There's the Ford dealer. Unless they're going to make their own cars, I doubt we're dropping that there. Where are we going? To the Chevron, which is even more interesting. I'm not quite sure what a gas station is going to do with a giant cable rail, but we just do what we're told. Well, considering we can only go left on the map, I assume we're going to go left up here. Keep left and then turn left. Look at that. Almost like a mind reader. The good news is, I hope this will be a green arrow first. I think I hear a train. Yep, there it is. Hopefully it'll be gone by the time we go. Oh, it will be, because we've got the worst light we can get. We're going to have to sit and wait through the cycle, but... Luckily, again, in the game, it's about 15 seconds at best. And then we'll get to go. The other thing I'm confused, this must be like a Chevron refinery, is what I'm thinking at this point. Because there's no way that in a gas station that we are going to be dropping off there. All right, well, the good news is I see the drop-off point. Oh, come on, stay green. Thank you. That truck almost hit me, even though I was in my lane. That was terrible. I was like, sir, we have a long trailer. Trident Seafood. I have delivered to them before. That is an interesting configuration. Very short trailer on a giant sleeper. No traffic, so we're going to take advantage of that to swing wide and make sure we don't have a problem. And the next road up is our delivery point. The nice thing is, no street lights, so we can just pull in, and as we said, 2.30, 2, 2, so a little bit later than we thought, and yes, it is, in fact, a refinery. I do like these at night. They're always amazing to look at. Ah, we, hit, we missed the one train. We hit one here. Oh, we still might. Look at that. I was going to say, it's going to mess up our ability to be within our delivery in an hour, but it may not. I may end up using the parking dialogue here because this is a tough, tough swing. But we will see. I will try. But if you miss with an articulated tray... Whoops. I don't know what I was looking at, but obviously I thought I had clearance and I didn't. What I was going to say is if you miss with an articulated trailer, there's not really an opportunity to fix it. Because as I said, you can't really back up. Well, we didn't miss. And look at that. Ten seconds to spare on an hour. 
So at least I made that goal. So satisfactory, we're going to have some damage, which also costs us XP, which is really disappointing, but we did get a next level. So what we are going to do, because you can see we get 22% experience here, only 20% there, and 18% there. So again, because we're trying to max up our ability to level up, we're going to go ahead and apply our skill point to Fragile Cargo, which again, we won't have available when we look for jobs next time. Um, so we'll have to take a, another job that is just a basic job, but longer distance, near a thousand miles. But we will continue from there, and hopefully I will get better at not uh, creating crazy issues within these videos. Um, until next time, we'll see you on Trucking Stories.